Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. There have been a lot of people making comments on social media lately, again. And a lot of it is fabricated, made up stories, don't even go along with scripture. Because they really don't know scripture. God's holy word. Yeah. From cover to cover is scripture. From Genesis all the way to Revelation is scripture. The Old Testament is. God's law. God also moving on the face of the earth, making the earth, making man, so on, so on, so on, so on. He got very discouraged when things were not going the way he designed them to go. So then he caused a great flood to destroy the earth and all the inhabitants of the earth, except for Moses, I mean not Moses, excuse me, Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives. And two by two of certain animals. Then after the flood, along comes Of course, everybody knows, along comes, um, well, they should know. You know, Moses and so on and so on. And then you have the history of it, the Israelites being conquered, coming back again, being conquered and coming back again. Because they would always go against God and what God wants. So they got conquered. Then they come back again. After they realize that they've done wrong. But what I wanted to stress here is that. There are a lot of people. Who are always saying. Well here is what the Bible says. In the Old Testament. About clean an unclean meat. Well, in the New Testament, which is the new covenant between man and God, you have everything is good to eat. As long as you bless it and you do it to the Lord. To God, as, as long as you bless the meat and then you do it as you do it unto the Lord. Now here's something I wanted to stress is that some people think I'm faking my uh, health problems. I'm faking my back problems because they think. They think with their head and not with their inner heart. That um, disabled people should be to be disabled in a wheelchair. Wrong. You don't have to be in a wheelchair to be disabled. Or, and you don't have to use a walker or a cane to be disabled. Now, only if certain things happen and, and you have to use it, yes. But there are things that I, I can walk, yes. I'm lucky to be walking. I, I'm blessed to be walking. Because a lot of people with spina bifida are born with a different type of spina bifida where they know that the baby has spina bifida when it's born. Because the spine is exposed and a lot of the organs are sometimes not in the right place. So they had to put things back. There's a lot of surgeries involved. And of course, a lot of those 
people with that type of spina bifida are usually paralyzed. I know I was dating a woman a while back that had that type of spina bifida. My spina bifida is called spon spina bifida occulta. Occulta does not mean the occult. It means closed. See, there's a lot of words that people want to play around with. Just like they want to play around with uh, the internet. They want to play around with uh, spina, uh, the, the scripture. They also want to play around with words, too, that I say. Generosity to the poor. This is one of the laws that was also in Deuteronomy. And this is one reason why that the poor was not forgotten in the time of Jesus. Basically, I'm going to just read a little bit here. If there is among you a poor man of your brother bre brethren with any of the within Excuse me, within any of the gates of your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the, your poor bro, bro, brethren, but you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him significant. For his need. Whatever he needs. It goes on. And you can read more later if you open up a Bible. And then there are people that want to tell me and they want to quote uh, some scripture again they take scripture out of context and then they want to read oh uh, since I find it here actually here's something else I want to read too uh, real quick that goes along with Deuteronomy that I just read. This is found in Hebrews 13, 16. But do not forget to do good and to share for with, for with such sacrifice God is well pleased. Of course, then talks about obeying rulers over us, where we don't have rulers over us anymore. We don't have kings over us. Because I'm a king in the United States of America. Well, let me find that real quick, if I can here. I had it marked. Uh, one of these bookmarks here. Okay, in Second Thessalonians, people are always bring it up to me, and again misquoting scripture. Second, Second Thessalonians three. For when we were with you, we commanded you this: if any one will not work, neither shall he eat. Well, that's not talking about physical labor, manual labor work. That's talking about labor, uh, working in the church body. Again, 
always wanting to bring up you know something that they really don't know what they're talking about because there's people that says I don't know what I'm talking about either but that I know what I'm talking about that does not mean physical manual labor like a job And then there are people that want to bring up Oh, you should not judge. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says that you can judge. Really? Evidently you did not read those scriptures at all. Or you're just nitpicking what you want to read and believe in. John 7. John, because that says 6, but in my Bible, there's verse 7 starts. And over here on the next page, John 7, 24. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment basically that means you can judge and again we have the right to judge sexual immorality sorry my cats are here wanting to do their own thing and I'm trying to um, correct them she wants to hop down and there's another cat on the floor here and they don't get along too well. <clears throat> Again, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6 both state that the 1 Corinthians there's where five starts right here. Immorality defiles the church. And all the way back here on the next page, it says right here, immorality must be judged, which means we can judge immorality. For what have I to do with judging those who are on the outside because God has already judged those who are on the outside do you not judge those who are inside but those who are outside God judges therefore put away from yourselves the evil person And right here, too, it says in, in 6, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you do, you, do not be deceived? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor coveters, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extorters, I mean, ex excuse me, ex yeah, <sighs> extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Sometimes I just can't get my tongue on a from my eye tooth. Oh yeah, what well, eye tooth? See, and that talks all about sexual immorality and sin. But 
why I wanted to say right here too real quick before I forget about it is do you know that we shall judge the angels see we're going to be judging the angels too we're going to be judging the world too do you not know that the saints will judge the world Again, we can judge. We have the right to judge. But there's people who say, Oh, judge not lest ye be judged. And that's where they leave it. They get that in their head. They don't want to read anything else. They just want to leave it there. And there was somebody asked me, what is sin? Whoever commits sin, this is in First um, John 3, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. So there you have it. Some more Bible truth to uh, chew on. I know it's a hard pill to swallow that your truth is not God's truth. But there's a lot of people out, people out there that want to say a lot of things that they shouldn't be saying because they don't know the whole truth. They think they do, but really? They have proven to me many, many times over. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm having some problem issues with my furnace again. It'll come on. It'll run for a while. Then all of a sudden, it won't come on, stay on. There's a control box. When that control box on the motor gets hot, too hot, then it, it just won't let the furnace stay on. Last time I had my, my furnace uh, serviced, it cost uh, $83 for a tax. The parts was $18. That's for a nozzle and a filter and a CAD cell. $18. Well, I can get a nozzle for $8 or something. Filter, I'm, I, I have a price of filter. I had a filter one time. And I can't, don't remember exactly. Remember how much that was. And this is in 2016. I didn't have it serviced before this winter and been wanting to wanting to but other things kept coming up long story short I don't have the money to have it serviced and a lot of programs have fizzled out there's no help out there really I got a little bit of help from my pastor of my church I attend to, but still it's not what these people want to come and work on the furnace. Got a couple of radiator heaters, upright radiator heaters. And the only warmest room in the ha house trailer is our bedroom. Because I got um, 
it's a curtain, well, actually not a curtain, it's a uh, old blanket hanging from the top of the ceiling down, because that's our door. We all have a door on our bedroom. This is an old house trailer and had some remodeling here, there, and somewhere else. And it's not like what a lot of people think it should be. But hey, it's my home. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Granted, it's my home. A lot of people think uh, if you don't have the money to fix it up yourself, then you don't need it. Move out, go to an apartment, give up your ham radio stuff, and give up this and give up that. Why don't you give up what you have? Oh, no, I worked hard for it. And they think I didn't work a day in my life. What a bunch of liars. I'm so sick and tired of it. Either you stop lying and you apologize and you stop harassing me because you don't know the truth. A bunch of you are a bunch of young young people who think you know better when you don't and some of you are around my age a little bit older and you still think you know better and when you don't grow up apologize and stop what you're doing because there will be a hell for you And it's not the kind of hell that you think that you've been taught. Like a, a fi you know, a f fiery place where you go to. No. It's where there's gnashing of, gnashing of teeth. If you have teeth. moaning and groaning and gnashing of teeth and, and it's just not a good place to go to, period. And then once, you know, the time comes and the great white throne judgment seat of God, everybody that's in that place comes out of that place and gets cast into the fiery pit with Satan and his demons. Along with death and Hades. Well, listen, I want to get off here because I've already said enough. God bless you. Have a blessed day.